Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. If you understand this part of secular and biblical history, then you are in the know and are part of the more enlightened part of mankind. The book of Daniel, chapter 5, verse 14. Now I have heard about you, that a spirit of the gods is in you, and that illumination, insight, and extraordinary wisdom have been found in you. The book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 18. May the eyes of your heart be illuminated so that you may know what is the hope of his calling in the wealth of the glory of his inheritance with the saints. Our history begins in Rome around 193 AD. The book of Hebrews Chapter 6, verse 4 through 6. For it is impossible for those who were once illuminated, have tasted also the heavenly gift, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, have moreover tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, and are fallen away to be renewed again to penance, crucifying again to themselves the Son of God, making him a mockery. Black Caesar of Rome, 193 AD. Septimius Severus. Provincia Impera Romanorum, AD 210. Provinces of the Imperial Roman Empire, AD 210. 8th century BC, Phoenician colony, two centuries after King Solomon. Phoenician trade routes, Phoenicia and its colonies, Cyprus, Asia Minor, Crete, Greece, Italy, Sicily, Sardinia, Corsica, Gaul, France, England, Iberia, Spain, North Africa, Carthage, Libya, Egypt, 8th century BC, Phoenician colonies. A thousand years later, the Roman Empire of Septimius Severus, 210 AD, corresponds to the same area of Phoenician colonies in Europe, North Africa, and the Near East. Septimius Severus, the African Emperor by Anthony R. Burley. Septimius Severus, the African Emperor. Or should he rather be known as and called Septimius Severus, the African Israelite Emperor of Rome. Septimius Severus, the African Israelite Emperor. Septimius Severus, the African Emperor, was descended from Phoenician settlers in 
Tripolitania. In his reign, AD 193 to 211, represents a turning point in Roman history. He was descended from Phoenician settlers. For more of this intriguing history, let's turn to the book, The Jews, Story of a People by Howard Fats. Now, how much of the Phoenician nobility was Jewish? We do not know. David Ben-Gurion, I have heard, holds that the Jewish influence was great and that very likely Hannibal and his family were Jewish. Septimius Severus, emperor of Rome, was of Phoenician nobility. Now, how much of the Phoenician nobility was Jewish? We do not know. But David Ben-Gurion, I have heard, holds that the Jewish influence was great and that very likely Hannibal, a Phoenician, and his family, Phoenicians, were Jewish. This is a quote by David Ben-Gurion. Wikipedia article, David Ben-Gurion, David Ben-Gurion, born David Grun, October 16, 1886, died December 1, 1973, was the primary national founder of the State of Israel and the first prime minister of Israel. So David Ben Gurion was the national founder of the state of Israel. A map of the state of Israel, the modern nation state of Israel, and her neighbors Egypt, Syria, Lebanon. Jordan, and Saudi Arabia. The Israeli Declaration of Independence, formerly the Declaration of the Establishment of the State of Israel, was proclaimed on May the 14th, 1948, by David Ben-Gurion, the executive head of the World Zionist Organization, chairman of the Jewish Agency for Palestine and soon to be the first Prime Minister of Israel. The African plate is a major Teutonic plate that includes much of the continent of Africa. The land of Israel is located on the African plate. Canaan the fourth son of Ham inhabited the country now called Judea and called it from his own name, the land of Canaan. Now all the children of Mizraim, the Egyptians, being eight in number, possessed the country from Gaza to Egypt, though it retained the name of only one, the Philistim or the Philistines. For well, the Greeks called part of that country Palestine from the Philistines. Antiquities of the Jews, Book 1, Chapter 5. The land of Israel is located on the African Teutonic Plate. David Ben Gurion proclaiming the Israeli Declaration of Independence on May 14th, 1948. 
Elah Valley in the land of Israel. And this is an image of the Declaration of Independence of the State of Israel, created May 14, 1948. And David Ben Gurion is one of the authors and signers of the Declaration of Independence of the State of Israel. David Ben Gurion in 1960, first Prime Minister of Israel, in office from November 3rd, 1955, until June 26, 1963. Now we can understand who it was that this information was gathered from. Now, how much of the Phoenician nobility was Jewish? We do not know. David Ben-Gurion, I have heard, holds that the Jewish influence was great and that very likely Hannibal and his family were Jewish. These are coins of Hannibal Barker. Hannibal and his family was Jewish. Coins of Hannibal Barker. Hannibal and his family was Jewish. Coins of Hannibal Barker. Hannibal Barker was Jewish and he was a Negro. Hannibal, most famous of all Carthaginians, was a Negro. Sex and Race, Volume 1, J.A. Rogers, page 89. Hannibal, Hannibal, his name in Punic or Phoenician or ancient Hebrew is Hanabaio. Hannibal, if that name is Romanized, born 247, died between 183 and 181 BC, was a Carthaginian general and statesman who commanded the forces of Carthage in their battle against the Roman Republic during the Second Punic War. He is widely regarded as one of the greatest military commanders throughout history. Hannibal's father, Hamilcar Barca, was a leading Carthaginian general during the First Punic War. His younger brothers were Mago and Hasdrubal. Now, Carthage symbolized by the pledge that Hannibal made to his father. Hannibal made a pledge to his father to never be a friend of Rome. A map of the empire of Carthage and the Roman Empire. Rome and Carthage at the beginning of the Second Punic or Phoenician War with Rome, 218. BC, Italy or Rome controlled Italy, Corsica, Sardinia, and Sicily. Carthage controlled Spain, North Africa, included Mauritania and Numidia. Wikipedia article Hamnakar Barker. Hamnakar Barker or Bacchus was born in 275 and died in 228 BC, was a Carthaginian general and statesman, leader of the Barsid 
family, named father of Hannibal, Hasdrubal, and Mago. Hamilcar commanded the Carthaginian land forces in Sicily from 247 BC to 41 BC. During the latter stages of the First Punic War or Phoenician War, he kept his army intact and led a successful guerrilla war against the Romans in Sicily. Barsid family. Now, how much of the Phoenician nobility was Jewish? We do not know. David Ben-Gurion have heard, I have heard, holds that the Jewish influence was great and that very likely Hannibal, the Barsid family, and his family, the Barsid family, were Jewish. The Barsid, the Barsid, Phoenician, Barak, or Hebrew, family was a notable Phoenician family in the ancient city of Carthage. Many of its members were fierce enemies of the Roman Republic. The actual by name was the Northwest Semitic Barca or Barcus, which means lightning, but it can also mean blessed. During the third century BC, the Bosids comprised one of the leading families in the ruling Orlaki of Carthage. The Bosids founded several Carthaginian cities in the Iberian Peninsula, Spain, some of which still exist today. Barsids, one of the leading families of Carthage. People of Punic origin prospered again as traders, merchants, and even politicians of the Roman Empire. Carthage once again prospered and even became the number two trading city in the Roman Empire until Constantinople took over that position. The Emperor Septimius Severus had Punic or Phoenician Hebrew origin and was said to speak Latin with a Punic accent. Under his reign or rulership, Carthaginians or Hebrews rose to the elites. Carthaginians or Hebrews or Jews rose to the ruling elite of the Roman Empire. Italy, her people and their story. A popular history of the beginning, rise, development, and progress of Italy from the time of Romulus to that of Victor Emmanuel III, page 364. Severus appointed his sons, Caracalla and Gita, as his joint successors in the empire. And for the next 25 years, African Negroes ruled in Rome. Severus dynasty, the Carthaginians, African Negroes, Jews, Israelites. Picture of the Severus dynasty. African Negroes, Carthaginian, Phoenician, Hebrews, rulers of Rome, coin of Hannibal Barca, Phoenician, Hebrew, Jew, Carthaginian. Now, how much of the Phoenician nobility was Jewish? We do not know. David Ben-Gurion, I have heard, holds that the Jewish influence was great 
and that very likely Hannibal and his family were Jewish. Severus dynasty, the Carthaginian dynasty, African Negroes, just like Hannibal Barker, Negroes, Jews, Israelites, Phoenicians, Carthaginians, Wikipedia, name, the name Mago was a common masculine given name among the Carthaginian elite. It meant God sent. The cognomen or epithet Barak means thunderbolt or shining. It's the Hebrew Barak. Barak name. Wikipedia article. Barak, Hebrew, lightning, is a masculine name of Hebrew origin. It appears in the biblical book of Judges as the name of the Israelite general Barak, who alongside Deborah led an attack against the forces of King Jabin of Hazor. Hannibal Barker or Barak. Hebrews, Jews, Israelites, Phoenicians. The Jews were called Phoenicians and Carthaginians. But also the northern tribes of Israel, the indigenous Indians of the Americas were also called Phoenicians. There is a theory that the Phoenicians colonized Florida at an earlier period still. If they were, as Signor Generelli suggests, a copper-colored race, then they were likely the progenitors or forefathers of the Shawnees themselves, who assert that their forefathers were not indigenous, but came across the ocean from whence they know not. In memory of which event they continued to celebrate a yearly sacrifice for their safe arrival in America up till the beginning of the present century. Ancient and Modern Britons, Volume 1, page 18. Shawnee people, Phoenicians, Israelites, Native Americans, lost tribes of Israel. Now, how much of the Phoenician nobility was Jewish? We do not know. David Ben-Gurion, I have heard holds that the Jewish influence was great and that very likely Hannibal and his family were Jewish. Hannibal, Negro, Black, person of color, a Jew. Judah, Benjamin, or Levi. Sex and Race, Volume 1 by J.A. Rogers. The Old World. Coins of Hannibal. Hannibal, a Jew. Carthaginian, a Phoenician, an Israelite. Index 22. Number 7. Coins of Hannibal of Carthage. 
but also in this same book, the Cambridge Encyclopedia Company has a coin from the time of Justinian of the Byzantine Empire. And the Cambridge Encyclopedia Company says that this coin, the Byzantine coin, places beyond a doubt the fact that Jesus Christ or Yahusha, Jesus Christ was a Negro. Sex and Race, Volume 1, J.A. Rogers. The coin or the image of the coin would probably be made in an upcoming video. Hannibal, most famous of all Carthaginians, was a Negro. Septimius Severus, another great emperor, was born in Africa. Hannibal and his African troops must have brought a great deal of Negro strain or blood into the Roman population. For 13 years, they dominated the peninsula from the Alps to Naples. Hannibal himself was a full-blooded Negro with woolly hair, as his coins show. His wife was Spanish and perhaps white. Sex and Race, Volume 1. Septimius Severus, Roman Emperor. Graham's Dyke, which denomination others assert to be taken from Emperor Severus or Graham's Dyke is named after Septimius Severus. Severus, being born in Africa, was of a very black and swarthy complexion. And that since the dyke was termed or given the name Grim's Dyke. Grim in Perth, Scotland, signifying black or swarthy. Whence the Scottish word Grim is derived. This is from the book, The History of the Surname of Buchanan. Grimm's Dyke is also known as Antonine Wall of Scotland, where the Phoenicians slash Israelites lived and ruled. Israel traveled to the British Isles since the times of King Solomon. The history of the ancient surname of Buchanan. Severus being born in Africa was of a very black and swarthy complexion. Scotland, Antonine War, the Roman province of Britannia. Antonine War, also called Grimm's Dyke. Grimm's Dyke. Britannia was a province of the Roman Empire under Septimius Severus. Britannia is divided into Britannia Inferior and Britannia Superior. Antonine War, known to the Romans as Volume and Tone Anat was a turf fortification, stone foundations, built by the Romans across what is now the central belt of Scotland. Between the Firth of Clyde and the Firth of Forth, built some 20 years after Hadrian's Wall to the south, and intended to supersede it, while it was garrisoned it was the northernmost frontier barrier of the Roman Empire. It spanned approximately 39 miles and was about 10 feet high and 16 
feet wide. The barrier was the second of the two great walls created by the Romans in Great Britain in the second century AD. Its ruins are less evident than those of the better known and longer Hadrian's Wall to the south. Primarily because the turf and wood wall has largely weathered away. Unlike its stone-built southern predecessor, Antonine Wall, Grimm's Dyke. Grimm's means black or swabby in Scottish, named after Septimius Severus because of his dark color. Antonine's Wall, or Grimm's Dyke. And medieval histories, such as the Chronicles of John of Fordham, the wall, Antonine Wall, is called Grimm's Dyke. The wall was abandoned only eight years after completion, when the Roman legions withdrew to the south to Hadrian's Wall in 162 CE. After a series of attacks in 197, the Emperor Septimius Severus arrived in Scotland in 208 and campaigned against the Maite, based in the central Midland Valley, either side of the Firth of Clyde, Firth of Fourth Line, and the Caledonians to the north. Wars were being fought in Scotland, and the Romans could not keep the north of Scotland in their possession. While he carried out substantial work, Severus, on Hadrian's Wall at the time, there is no evidence of any attention being paid to the remains of Antonine Wall during the campaigns of 208 to 210. Septimius left that wall alone. Reference in late Roman sources to Severus wall building activities led to latter scholars like Bed mistaking references to the Antonine Wall for ones to Hadrian Walls. After a time, uh, Hadrian Wall was confused with Antonine Wall. Antonine Wall was further up north in Scotland. The History of Israelite Kings and Emperors and Rulers in the Roman Empire and in Scotland and England is uh, pretty interesting. Here's a book, Pop Goes the Weasel, The Secret Meanings of Nursery Rhymes. As I was going by Charing Cross, as I was going by Charing Cross, I saw a black man upon a black horse. They told me it was King Charles the First. Oh dear, my heart was ready to burst. This rhyme, with its echo of ride a cock horse to Banbury Cross, refers to the public execution of King Charles I on 30th of January, 1649, outside the Palace of Whitehall, very close to Caring Cross. Following his capture and imprisonment by the parliamentarian towards the end of the Civil War, Charles presented a huge problem to his captors. Alive, he posed a constant threat to their new state. Dead, he would instantly become a hero. Eventually and reluctantly, they brought him to trial. The lack of public support for the trial was painfully obvious. Despite the hard wording of the charge brought against him, out of a wicked design to erect and uphold himself with an unlimited and tyrannical power to rule according to his own will, 
and to overthrow the rights and the liberties of the people of England. Showing the same arrogance that had brought on the Civil War, Charles refused even to answer the charge, believing that his own authority to rule had been given to him by God when he had been crowned and anointed. While the power wielded by those wishing to try him was simply that which grew out of a barrel of gunpowder. The court argued that no man was above the law, but when the king was duly found guilty, Richard Brandon, hangman of London, summed up the general mood by refusing to carry out the task. Charles believed that his enemy's power was from the barrel of a gun, King Charles I of England, while his power and authority came straight from God. Eventually, a man was paid 100 pounds, a ridiculous amount of money for the time, to act as executioner. But he insisted on remaining anonymous. The killing of a king was hugely contentious, and the murder of the man divinely chosen to rule made the perfect ghoulish subject for a nursery rhyme. Although the execution was watched by thousands, including the famous diarist Samuel Pepys, few accounts of it survive to this day. It was common practice for the head of a person convicted of treason to be held up following their decapitation and shown to the crowd with the words, Behold, the head of a traitor. When Charles' head was exhibited, the words were not used, and unlike the carnival atmosphere at any normal execution, the mood of the crowd was somber. Hearts really were ready to burst. Rare stage phenomena was later recorded in relation to the execution. A beach well at Dover died within an hour of Charles himself. A fallen star appeared that night over Whitehall. And a man who had said the king deserved to die had his eyes pecked out by crows, or so it was said. Description of King Charles I of England A black man on a black horse. Wikipedia, as I was going by Charing Cross. As I was going by Charing Cross, sometimes referred to as I was going to Charing Cross, is an English language nursery rhyme. The rhyme was first recorded in the 1840s, but it may have older origins in street cries in verse of the 17th century. It refers to the equestrian statue of King Charles I in Charing Cross, London and may allude to his death or be a Puritan satire on royalist reactions to his execution. It was not recorded in its modern form until the 19th century. As I was going by Charing Cross, Charing Cross with the statue of Charles I to the right, a nursery rhyme published 1840s, Lyrics, modern versions include, As I was going by Charing Cross, I saw a black man upon a black horse. They told me it was King Charles I. Oh dear, my heart was ready to burst. Origin, the rhyme is thought to refer to the equestrian statue of Charles I. Ruled 1625 to 1649, which was erected after the Restoration in 1660. It was moved in 1675 to the site of Old Charing Cross in central London. The tarnished bronze statue 
is largely dark in color, but the black may refer to the king's hair color. No, the black refers to the king's dark complexion. It was a traditional London street cry, or a traditional London street cry was, I cry my matches at Charing Cross, where sits a black man on a black horse. I cry my matches by old Charing Cross, where sitteth King Charles upon a black horse. A note of a ballad in the 17th century manuscript at Oxford contains the lines, but because I could not divine Charles the first, by my tooth my heart was ready to burst. The first part was printed as a children's rhyme and a variation of the more famous Ride a Cock Horse in Pretty Tales, published in 1808, with the lyrics, Ride a Cock Horse to Charing Cross to see a black man upon a black horse. The modern version, which may combine elements of this rhyme with a reference to the execution of Charles I was first collected and printed by James Orchard Hallowell in the 1840s. Charles I, King of England, the black man on the black horse. was executed in the year of our Lord, 1649. Septimius the Israelite started his reign or rulership in 193 AD. Charles the Israelite and did his in 1649 A.D.